Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to worship. Welcome to our visitors. Welcome to those of you who are joining us from home. My heart is so full today. Uh, we had our vacation Bible school uh, ended last week. We took a group of our youth to Trade Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee this past week, put an entire metal roof on. I had a baptism at our last service. It's almost like we're back. And if you are an 815 worshiper, I am pleased as anything to tell you the service will be back on the first Sunday in August, on August 1st. So uh, those of you who have waited so patiently, thank you. Uh, lots to share this morning. Our rummage sale is coming up in July. There's information about that, about the dates, and about drop-off in the e-news. We thank you for continuing to support our food pantries, both Bainbridge and Burton. Uh, in our prayers this morning, we pray for uh, the Jambor family at the death of Clara Jean. We also offer prayers of thanksgiving, our longtime secretary, the voice of Lord of Life in many respects from Monday through Friday, Carolyn Newmore, received a new kidney this week. And so... Uh, we give God thanks for that, and we pray for healing and that her body uh, accepts, that, accepts, accepts that kidney. Uh, we also pray for all those in our ongoing prayers. We pray for those where the coronavirus is surging, and particularly for Brazil and those places that have yet to have any access to the vaccine. I believe the rest of the announcements are uh, complete as they are shared in your bulletin this morning. And so if you're able, I invite you to stand as we begin worship this morning with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. We gather this Father's Day to worship Almighty God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment now and share a safe, distanced, contact-free greeting of peace with those nearby.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Be with, you. with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal, eternal majesty, majesty, you preside Lord, over land and sea, sea sunshine, sunshine and storm. By, by your, your strength, strength, pilot us. By your power, power preserve us. By your wisdom, wisdom instruct us. us. And by, by your, your hand, hand protect, protect us. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to Holy Scripture. Good morning. Are we that asleep? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Much better. Our first reading this morning is found in Job. 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted out for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when they burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling ban, and prescribed its bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud ways be stopped. 
The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our second reading today is found in 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet as well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to the fourth chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when arriving, when evening had come, he had said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him and left him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great wisdom a windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey them? him? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. Do we have any children that would like to come up and join me today? I know we probably have some at home. So... There is no way for me to hide this from the big kids in the room and just show the little ones on their cameras. So we all get to see it at the same time. This is our brand new Thrivent shirts for the year. Every year they change the color and the design. This is the new one that our volunteers at the rummage sale will be wearing. Um, and I brought this for us kiddos and us big kiddos because this week, as Pastor Rob said, we were in Johnston County, Tennessee, and we had lots of God moments, so many that I couldn't even list them if I tried, but a few of them were really important. We had this young man, he was probably in his early 20s, and he was there as a staff member, and he got voluntold to be the cook for the year. <laughs> 
So as you can imagine, he was not very happy because he did not want to be cooking, but he did such wonderful job for our groups and will continue throughout the summer. So Pastor Rob, the kids and I took one of our shirts that we had. We had the bright red ones from last year and we gave him one. And that gentleman was so happy to receive, as he said, the most comfortable shirt ever. Um, that way that would carry him through the summer. Um, so we were a blessing to him that day and saying thank you for all he did. We also got many opportunities, and I think Pastor Rob and I agree, one of the opportunities we had was to have to call Triple A while we were there. <laughs> But the blessing out of that was we called AAA. We are in the middle of nowhere, and he was there in 30 minutes. It was amazing. 30 minutes, this gentleman comes up, hardly could walk when he gets out of the van. And I asked him, I said, he was into the van in seconds, and I said, how long have you been doing this? He said, I've been doing this 55 years. He said, and my daddy taught me how to do this because he was the one in town that did all the service work before me. So he was our God moment because one, he came to rescue us, but two, <laughs> um, he was able to tell us stories of the county. Now our kids did amazing work this week and they just reached out. And my message to the kiddos at home is no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, we can all make a difference. And on this Father's Day, whether it's you give your dad a big hug or the man in your life just by saying thank you, this is an important day because you can make a difference no matter how old you are. So we are going to turn to our message song, and I will be right back. Grace and peace to you from Jesus the Christ, amen. So, as I like to do every week, I like to talk about God moments and where we see God present and active and moving in our lives. And as I just expressed in our little kid's message, um, that there is things going on all week that we at Lord of Life, from home, from the mission trip, have been involved in. And one of my big God moments, I jokingly said I was going to share with you guys this week, so I'm going to share it. Um, one of the blessings of this week is we would work so hard throughout the week. And then we'd go back to the center. And as I took a shower on Monday, I realized that we did not have lukewarm water. We had freezing water. <laughs> and only freezing water. So that was a disappointment. And on Tuesday, I went to take a shower, and it was ice cold. So on Wednesday, I thought I would use the outside showers, and it was ice cold. What a disappointment. And then finally on Thursday, one of the staff members, as I get out of the van, came to me, and she said, Pastor Aaron, there's hot water inside. 
And I went running to take a shower, and I think Miss Dana heard me singing Alleluia at some point. And joking aside, it was a wonderful moment to finally have hot water after so many days. But then, you know, it's lesson to us all and to our teens that were with us. Because in the county that we were at, 58% of the homes only had electric. There was a percentage that had propane heat, and there was quite a percentage of homes that had no heat in the mountains whatsoever. And there was also a percentage of homes that had no running water with children living there. So, my joy of finally having that hot water put things in perspective, especially for the group, that we have those who seriously benefited this week from the work that our kids did ensuring a warm, safe space for that family to live in. So God bless all those teens and leaders that went on our trip this week and all of you who followed along. Um, it was a joy to be able to follow along um, and there are many pictures on the Facebook page if you have not been up yet to see them. Now, I want to remind you before I start the message today that there is a story in the Old Testament and we all know the story of David and Goliath. So today I would like to do some parallels between the David and Goliath story and our story of Jesus sleeping on a boat, saying, peace be still. The world looks different now. Something is over. In the deepest levels of my existence, something is finished, done. My life is divided into the before and the after. How many of us can say that there was a point in our lives where we could say that? This was written by a man named Nicholas, a professor at Yale. What he's writing about is no lofty philosophical ideal, and it's intensely, imperson intensely personal. These lines come from his book, A Lament for a Son. It's a memoir of an event that changed his life. It's an event that seems so violent to the natural order, the experience that no parent should ever go through. It is about burying one's own child, his son Eric, who died at 25 from a rock climbing accident. He said he was a gift for us for 25 years, and when that gift was snatched away, I realized how great it truly was but I couldn't tell him. I didn't know how much I loved him until he was gone. Is love truly like that? And yes, most of us would agree that that is truly what love is often like. There are experiences that change us, episodes of joy that have in intense effect on us. But there are also experiences of pain and sorrow that mark us for life and influence us for all of our days to come. They're called crises. The word crisis comes from Latin, and before that, it comes from Greek, and it actually means a decision. It would be a point of decision, a point in crisis that we have to tumble into fast and furious, and you want to be in bed and pull the covers up over your head, but if it's a genuine crisis, you can't do that in that moment. A crisis forces a decision, and it might be a right one or a wrong one, but a decision has to be made in action is not an option in these moments. Our scripture lesson today that I read was about Jesus in a boat, during a storm, being woken up, and he had a decision to make. Our story that I reminded you of, of David and Goliath, is in the Old Testament, and it is a crisis. It's a contrast between David and Goliath. 
It's a connection between the New Testament lectionary that we can pull together because they each are dealing with a crisis. David, a young man at the time, had never seen so many soldiers in one place. The Philistine army was spread out all over the battlefield. They're ready for action. They have breastplates and helmets and leather and bronze. And then there's Goliath, who nobody wanted to stand up to Goliath. And then steps forward a boy. He's only a boy. His name is David. He is a shepherd. He is a son of a shepherd. He is a nobody. Goliath probably couldn't take that very seriously. I would imagine that he probably laughed in the situation because here he is, legs as big as tree trunks, and this little boy coming against him. And we all know what happens. After they probably talk back and forth and do some trash talking, they come Forward And David reaches into his shoulder bag and pulls out a smooth stone that he pulled from a dry stream bed and places it in a sling and kills Goliath instantly. With the cry, he ran towards Goliath, killing him instantly. It turns out that in this moment of crisis, David knew exactly what to do and how to do it. Our second story, of course, is the famous story of Jesus calming the storm. The day starts off quite well. They all get in the boat. Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat, and all of a sudden these swallows come up over the boat, and they're convinced that they are all going to perish. So they wake him up, wondering why he is not panicked. And Jesus says, peace still. You would think that Jesus would be a little bit rattled by the storm, but he's not. He is completely cool. So where does he find that presence? Where do we find that presence in our lives? Just as David did with Goliath and Jesus did facing this storm, how do we tap into that inner strength and power? So looking at these two stories, I came up with a few pointers. First is humility. David isn't a mature king at this time. He's a boy. He's not there trash talking. He's not there being boastful. He knows what he has to do, and he goes for it. Now our second thing is David is confident. He knows himself, he knows the skills that he has, and he doesn't aspire to be an expert. He just does it. The third point is in mental preparation. David's ability to focus. He aims single-mindedly at the thing he has to do, and above all those people who are quaking, looking at Goliath, he does what he needs to do. Fourth, and most of all, he trusts in God. He is aware that God has chosen him to do the job. He is not the director of this fight, but God is. And it's easy not to speculate about Jesus' inner mind when he's on the boat compared to David. What was he thinking? But Jesus knew that God was in control when he woke too, and that's where he found that peace. So it's not always easy to face chaotic times in our lives, and one of the most fruitful things we can do is still point to those storms and dwell there for a few moments. In the case of David, we can imagine him strolling down the hillside into that dry creek bed because that's where he finds those smoothest stones. You can picture him possibly humming himself as he strolls through that creek bed, gathering those stones, doing a familiar business of collecting them and loading up his pouch. And in the case of Jesus, it takes the form of Jesus napping. 
How beautiful is that? Jesus is napping in the back of the boat as the waves just break over them. So to bring it back to our time, if we look at prayer or perhaps contemplative prayer or meditative prayer, as we could say, some people think that it could be benign. It could be a useless activity. And some of us struggle in silence. We, we don't do well with those pauses where there's no noise happening. But for those who can practice meditative prayer or silent prayer, they know that there's something going on below the surface. Regular prayer is this sort of spiritual agility training. It gets us ready for things. And like David, the young shepherd, alone in the hillside, he often probably looked for those smooth stones, placing them into a sling, practicing sailing them off, getting his skill set ready, and then cultivating a regular prayer life in a way of developing spiritual tools. We are all advised not to wait. Not to wait until the waves come crashing down on the boat around us. But instead, get in the habit, the spiritual practices that strengthen us and help us to live good lives. Because that is the time that when the joys and the sorrows happen in life, we are better prepared for that. So to conclude, here is a few inspirational words. Whenever there is stillness, there is a small voice. And that small voice is God speaking from the whirlwind, nature's old song and dance. So my blessing for you today is may you listen to your inner voice today. May you listen to that inner voice and see what God is speaking to you in the whirlwind. And to end, peace. Be still. Amen. If you are able, I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the blessing and gift of your love, the love of a creator, the love without condition or merit. This day we give you thanks for uh, those who share this type of love, those fathers among us who share paternal love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the mission to which you've called us to go into the world, sow the good news, and grow in faith. We give you thanks for those who have, who have risen up these past several weeks as we have uh, welcomed children back to Vacation Bible School and as we have sent youth forth on a mission trip. We give you thanks for blessing us with our homeowner, with Patrick Gentry. We pray for him. We pray for our partners at Appalachia Service Project and the continuing work they are doing in eastern Tennessee and throughout Appalachia. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for leaders in our communities, in our nation, and around the world that they would Follow the prompting of your Holy Spirit as we seek to eradicate the coronavirus and the threat of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our ongoing prayer concerns, 
We pray for those mourning the loss of loved ones, and this morning we especially pray for the Jambor family at the death of Clara Jean. We pray for Marianne Boyle, for Pastor James Fox, for Dale Gabor, for Jerry Ann, for Tiffany Harmick, Marsha, Dana Lutz and the Kennedy family, Kathy, Maria, Mitch and Lindsay, Natalie Mandel, Megan Miller, Carolyn Newmore, Jack Newmore, Laura Peavy, Richie, Robin, Ginny Garkey, Pat Mitchell, Don Mitchell, Carol Skirbin, Judy Fulton, Joan Gabor, Jim Jaykosh, Judy Todia, and all those who we name now before you aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Remember on the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering, we pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, the clear wrapper on top of your communion will allow you to take out the bread, the body of Christ given for you. Take all the time you need as you remove that foil wrapper around uh, the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Amen. If you're able, I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Our final hymn this Father's Day, very appropriately, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, stands as one, two, and four. One, two, and four. commissioned us for what purpose? Go into, go into the world. world. Sow so the, the good news and grow in faith. Go now in peace to accomplish Christ's mission in the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hello, my dear friend. How are you? <laughs> you doing? Okay. Hanging in there the same as me, huh? Yeah, that's all we can do. Isn't it? the truth? How's Lorraine doing? She's That's the first time she's come back. Well, no, she's been back a couple of times, but it's hard. Well, that plus her sisters have been trying to get together with her, which is great. She needs oh, it. Oh, good. And that's usually they do some work, and she's on the Sunday, so like today, she was able to hear the birthday party for her sister. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she's, she's having a rough time. It is, and I'm sure you are, too. Every day, waking up with him, right. talking with him, coming home, and he's there. Yeah. When I go over there and I look out of this yard that he loves, it just tears me up, you know. Of course, of course. Yeah. It, there's no way around it. It's really rough. Yeah. It, it's rough. But I do keep you in my prayers, and I'll pray more for Lorraine, too. Yeah. I can only imagine. If it's me, and I, I yeah, it, it's a, it's